Wow, you all look beautiful. <laughs> all right. Look at whatever place you want. A country, a city, a building, a WordPress backend. If you happen to be a local in that place, you can choose to actively take impact on the experience other people, that is non-locals, will have in and with that place. To me, that place once was the central post office of Sofia, Bulgaria. And the local who would take impact on my experience there was an elder lady running a newsstand in said post office. So I enter the post office on Tuesday morning, 8 a.m., I've come to post a parcel to Germany, only to realize that neither am I able to read the Cyrillic signage all around, nor does anyone in that place understand, let alone speak, a word of English or German. Getting increasingly freaked out, I spent the next 20 minutes running to and fro the hall, standing in line here and there, in order to find the right counter to post my parcel. Every counter I go to turns out to be wrong. Nobody speaks my language. I got to catch a cap to the airport, stress hormones all over my neocortex. You get the picture. After 20 minutes, it is that lady from the newsstand who decides to take action and change the idiot's life forever. She takes a look at my package and starts walking me towards the right counter, which happens to be located outside the building in another building two blocks down the street. That lovely old lady wasn't the president of Post Bulgaria or something. She wasn't even a staff member in the post office. She just happened to run a newsstand in that building. Yet she was the one who would make it her responsibility to take care of my needs when I couldn't seem to find my way around the place. My experience as a first-time user of the central post office, Sofia Bulgaria, and of Bulgaria in general, will forever be determined by an amazingly simple act of human kindness performed by a stranger who chose to do something nobody had told her to do and nobody would ever blame her for if she had not done it, to care. This is a talk about you, I hope, some of you, the person who develops a WordPress plugin, and your relationship to a person who uses your plugin on their website. Mm. It is a talk about real people, not abstracted personas. There's no su such thing as the average user in this talk. This talk is about real people facing a real apocalypse on their computer screen when they activate yet another WordPress plugin. And all of a sudden, where there used to be a website, they see a blank page and the sky starts falling. We talk about real people who've been told they need to set up a website in order to run their micro-businesses, and they've been told it's going to be easy. And when they do, it soon becomes hell on earth, just because of a bunch of pixels they cannot seem to control. We talk about real people who end up blaming random support agents, or worse, themselves, for a problem that might not even exist for professional web developers, yet ha has the power to destroy hours of their work nonetheless. We talk about real stress points on a real scale that takes real effects on the real health situations of real humans on both sides of a support inbox, we talk about people losing money, self-respect, respect of others, or even their customers. We talk about all these things because this is a talk also about WP Admin, a highly popular user interface, open and subject to defacement. Now, we're going to see some specific UI examples toward the end, but right now, in order to better understand what is going on here, let's take a look at the state of WP Admin in 2016. First of all, we have heard it is going away. We probably all agree the REST API offers exciting opportunities. And decoupled WordPress make my WP admin increasingly irrelevant in terms of its UI in the future. Now, secondly, WP admin isn't going anywhere, of course. There's a majority of millions of real people out there who are and will be stuck with WP admin for years to come. Those people we may not see at the WordCamp. We may not even see them asking for help in a WordPress community forum on WordPress.org. Yet they are the ones who made and continue to make WordPress the most adapted open source CMS in the world. They secure our jobs. For most of the plugin developers among you, those people are your market. So it's definitely worth the time taking a closer look at what kind of experience they get with WordPress and plugin UI on a daily basis. 
Now, when we explore WP Admin as a user interface, we soon notice four types of user messages providing feedback on how things are going. These are success, something went well, error, something went wrong, warning, something needs attention or it might cause problems in the future, and info, something of neutral quality a person probably just would want to know about. You all know these types of messages. We call them admin notices due to the hook names they are accessible by from outside WordPress core. In fact, many of those are really setting errors by definition, but let's keep it simple and call them admin notices here. WordPress itself uses admin notices only to communicate system-related feedback. Things like plugin activated, setting safe, post publish, update available, an error occurred. Plugin developers, however, are free to use the same types of messages via hook whenever and for whatever purpose they see fit. So we see plugins generating admin notices for instructions to install other components, so-called recommended plugins, compatibility warnings, uh, critical update notes, upsell teasers, cross-sell promos, rating nags, and we're not talking edge cases. Take this from a customer support agent who gets to look at an average of five to 10 real world WP admins in all kinds of languages per week. It has become the rule in 2016 to have plugins stuffing WP admin with sometimes well meaning but misguided, sometimes plain abusive admin notices. Now, this becomes particularly interesting when we look at the states of human emotion related to those four message types. Again, success, something went well, that's relief. Error, something went wrong, that's fear. Warning, something needs attention, alertness. And info, something of neutral quality, that's assuredness. As so many plugin developers seem to be convinced that any message important enough to themselves, their strategy, or their plugin in general is worth an admin notice, and don't seem to care at all about what kind of chemistry those messages may invoke in the people they try to communicate to, the natural consequence is people stop caring as well. It has become very, very hard to get a user's attention in WP admin. When you gamble on, and I'm saying that word now, user attention, you can only lose, and everyone loses with you. Being bombarded with dozens of messages from dozens of plugins, people learn quickly not to give a shit. Hence, even critical messages get overlooked, stuff breaks, and the drama is on. Losing a reputation is incredibly easy these days when you run a business based on a WordPress plugin. Now, plugins and what they do to WP Admin or not in terms of UI are absolutely significant for the interactive experience people have with WordPress as a CMS. To a great extent, WordPress is what it is because of plugins. It is what it is because of you, the people who make plugins. You bring every possible and impossible functionality from this world and the next into WordPress. Many enhancements of WordPress start out as a plugin, and if you, the plugin creators in this community, won't make an effort to keep WP Admin neat and clean and usable for the people who use your products, will, who will? There will always be jerks, of course, but my question today is, why do even the well-meaning among plugin providers seem to struggle with core concepts of basic interaction design more often than rarely? Now, to answer that question, let me fall back on the good old tradition of mind reading for a moment. I've been trained as a mind reader by an old Apache tracker. That's a Native American, not a server tool. So while I'm up here speaking, I've been reading all of your minds. First of all, you think you know WP Admin inside out, or some of you may think that. But do you really? Unless you check in on customer systems regularly, chances are you develop in a standardized environment that has little to do with what WP Admin looks like out there in the wild. Now, secondly, many of you develop your plugins as if it is the only one people are ever going to install. It's not. They probably have Yoast and Jetpack, increasingly WooCommerce, some sort of security berserk, and even one, more than one of those, a caching solution, a page builder, and one of the other megaton of sliders, custom post times, ad integrations, tracking scripts, social plugins, form builders, e-commerce extensions, and shortcut generators, you might want to take into consideration that WP Admin is not your home. It is a shared apartment. And you have little to no control over the number of people you will have to live with, 
nor whether you get the king-size bed or that mat underneath the kitchen table. Thirdly, some of you still let yourself get away with the assumption that people are okay figuring out how stuff works once they activate your plugin. They are not. In 2016, people don't figure out how stuff works anymore. People expect stuff to figure out itself, so they can just go ahead and use it. They may find your settings page because you placed it in that top me level menu item, and then you bumped up its priority, so it'll appear even above Jetpack. But what then? These days, people expect the user interface to really talk to them and let them know what they can do and not. Apps on your phone do that all the time. Great web applications do it all the time. Do we really think we are going to get away with WordPress plugins just throwing the settings page into the left side menu and calling it a day? Human beings and their interactions with user interfaces are subject to studies and incredible marketing budgets. But let's break it down to common sense here. People interact with people. When a human interacts with a user interface on their computer screen, what they really do most of the time is trying to figure out the thinking of another human or groups of human, the ones who build that interface, and to try to anticipate the thinking of the very person who's now trying to make sense of their thinking in order to use their creation effectively. It's a complicated mess, but it can become the most beautiful thing when we manage to create a state of understanding and agreement on both sides of the computer screen all the way through time and space. We all know that feeling. When we see something working on the screen and we suddenly realize, hey, somebody took care of me uh, when they created that thing. Somebody spent time and effort in the past to make my life easier today. Wow. That is a wonderful feeling, isn't it? That state of understanding and agreement is somewhat the holy grail you want to reach as a plugin developer. And before we finally dive into some specific examples, let's take another quick look at caring in general. There is a reason why I picked the term caring over UX buzzwords like empathy or just recently compassion. And I hope you really uh, visited that talk this morning from Morton right there about empathy. If not, I highly recommend you look it up on WordPress TV uh, once it's published because he did away with all the buzzwords thing and just talked about empathy. Now, to care is a verb. It is a do word. You can excuse yourself that you just don't have enough empathy. Or you may tell yourself that you just aren't that compassionate all the time. You have no excuse when you don't care. Insult is implicit. Not to care means not given heck. It's a synonym for consciously chosen ignorance. Caring is one of those things you either do or you don't, like picking up that piece of paper there's no way to pick that up just a little. You either pick it up or you don't. There's no way of wanting to care. Your inner attitude is irrelevant until it shows outside of yourself by evidence of your actions. You don't care until you do. Now, I'm sure all of you developers out there do care about the experience people have with your plugin, and I'm sure it's awesome. But here's some food for thought. How much of that lady's newsstand would exist without the post office? How much of your plugin would exist without WordPress? How much of your plugin's UI would exist without WP Admin? How much of awesome will be left for your plugin when the overall experience a person has with WP Admin becomes annoying or even painful? Do you care about the experience people have with WordPress? Caring through plug-in UI can include the same sort of small, simple acts of human kindness that I was blessed to experience in that post office back in Sofia. And the good news is WordPress offers plenty of opportunity throughout the eight states of the plug-in life cycle for you to make WP Admin an even nicer experience. In case you never thought about the plug-in life cycle before, here it is. Search, install, activate, configure, operate, update, deactivate, delete. Got it? Again. Search, install, activate, configure, operate, update, deactivate, delete. Each of these states usually invokes or implies certain interactions between a user interface within WP Admin and a human. Interactions that you can take care of proactively. Just like that lady from the newsstand in that post office, as a local in WP Admin, you would basically make it your responsibility that a person gets along well. You don't want to take them on a sightseeing tour through all of WP Admin, of course. It's theirs. You're the new kid on their block. 
You do want to make sure, though, that they find their way around in terms of using your plugin. When they search for a solution to their problem, give them a meaningful description in their search results. Your plugin short description is not the place for generic superlatives. The best, the most, the greatest, the easiest, those are not descriptions people would draw any value from for their decision making. Besides, you're setting yourself up for failure. It's incredibly easy to fail being the whateverist. Write your short description as if you were composing a good tweet. Say what your plugin does and why people would love it in 140 characters and be a little entertaining at the same time. There isn't anything for you to do during installation. WordPress takes care of that. But once a person does activate your plugin, that's when you can store, score with an excellent first impression. Be nice and say hi. Give them a clue of what to do next. Take them on a quick tour and show them around, but make sure you keep them in control over their space. They should be able to dismiss that tour for everyone forever or have it pop up again later if they want. Mm -hmm. If your plugin has a great deal of settings to configure, consider providing some sort of guidance through the initial process. WordPress itself has a pretty neat setup wizard. WooCommerce has a great one. Could your plugin use one? If it, if it requires certain setting to be made before a person will be able to use it, a quick and decent wizard will take that person by the hand and guide them along. Oh yeah, and that, that undo link for saved setting is so annoying, set no user never. Once a person has configured your plugin to run on their website, the only thing they would expect from it is that it keeps operating smoothly. That is a fair expectation. You wouldn't expect your car to display car manufacturer uh, advertising on the windshield every thousand kilometers or so, so don't have your plugin do that. If you think you need other people's WP admin to market your product, then at least be creative about it. Make your upsell a feature. Instead of contributing to notice fatigue, create an eye catcher on your settings page that will entertain and provide value. And of course, keep those agencies and freelancers in mind who would desperately want a paid version of your plugin where upsells will not be displayed for their clients. Maybe white label or something. Now, you get a chance to, use, uh, to get user attention in WP Admin about three times a year, at least. Every time WordPress issues a major core update, you can and should run at least a compatibility update to let people know your plugin has been tested and will operate smoothly with the new core version. That's the time for you to show that you care for plugin UI. Don't just fart that admin notice into people's faces together with the other five admin notices in the top 700 pixels of WP Admin. Make your update a feature too. Like show that you care for your people's peace of mind allowing you to enter their website and perform an update is an incredibly vulnerable moment for most people. Have your plugin automatically detect and solve as many potential is issues as possible. Carry means to protect your kin. Don't let them click that update button and take their chances whether the website is going to survive or not. Plugin authors gambling on system sanity during the update process contribute to a serious problem in WordPress, which is update paranoia. As a plugin developer, you want people to update in order for you to be able to keep marketing to them. So there's your incentive to make triple sure your update won't break their site. And in case it does, provide means of immediate crisis management and support. It may only be another complaining user to you, but in fact, they are real people in real fear and pain. Breathe, that's a good idea. In case a person keeps your plugin deactivated for longer and you have the chance learning about it, a polite message in their inbox might make sense. People don't always have the nerve to pull up your support page and post their problem. Proactively approaching them when your plugin has been deactivated longer than a week, a week can start the support process on your end and may help you uh, win a customer back. Better make clear though that this is solely out of concern for your users' needs, not for your marketing. When your plugin gets deleted from WP Admin, the expectation is clearly that it gets deleted. Deleted as in wiped out completely. Files, gone. Options, gone. Custom tables, so gone. Don't fall trapped to the assumption it wouldn't hurt if a person installed your plugin again after they deleted it. 
and all their settings would just magically reappear. That magic is reserved for deactivation. If you absolutely think your users would love to keep your custom tables and options in their database after deletion, put them in control and make total deletion transparently optional right before deactivation, maybe. So there's lots of opportunity for plugin developers to really care. It may sound like a lot of work, but another part of the good news is there are no wheels to reinvent here. Just look around and learn from the best. There are plenty of examples of great interactions design out there. Pretty much all you have to do is explore them, play with them, determine how those products apply caring as a design principle, code your own interactional features into your plugin, and eventually build your reputation as the plugin provider who, whose UI in WP Admin clearly shows they care. WordPress has become a mature platform, for better and for worse. WP Admin is and will be open for you to create plugin user interfaces with. It is your choice whether your plugin will make WordPress look pretty or old. In any case, whether you like it or not, your plugin is not a separate entity. It is part of a community of components, and actively or passively, it will contribute to the way people perceive WordPress as a whole. Think about that for a while and come to your own conclusions. Hopefully, you find caring the coolest thing you've seen anyone uh, do, including yourself. <laughs> the title of that talk is quoted from a Peanuts cartoon I saw in a tweet thanks to Charles and Charles and the unknown person who put this on the web first, whoever that is. My name is Kasper Hüminger. I'm a plugin support agent at WP Media. The people who build plugins like WP Rocket, Imagify, and SecoPress. And I show care to answer your questions here or at the happiness bar. <laughs>